Today on the channel we're going to take a look at the Guitar World Buyer's Guide from 2002. Here's Guitar World from 2002, the Buyer's Guide, and uh, this is back when they used to put pinups in their Buyer's Guides, which they stopped doing in 2016, but uh, I thought this would be an interesting uh, review to go back and take a look and see what the gear looked like back in 2002, what the prices were, and exactly how far Guitar World was willing to take it back in those days. So this is pretty nice cover. We got this stuffed leopard down here, or cheetah. I guess it's a cheetah. All right, so let's turn the page. Bunch of cool Fender amps. Used to have one of those Supersonics. Those things were pretty nice. Love how Fenders and Marshalls amps like that. They just never change. They the way they look anyway. There's some PVs. Digitech stuff here. Huge lineup with Jackson. Jackson was cranking it out in 02. I like that. It looks like the Phil Call and the PC model. Gary King rocking the PC Rich. Tony Iommi. <laughs> Gibson Pure. Watch for flying panties. Different times. Here we go. All right, the single cut. Attention. Hup, two, three, four. Tough as nails and made of wood these guitars are mighty good loud as hell and all our new solid bodies and arch tops too that's pretty lame but a decent picture I guess starting off with the A's Axel Abyss, Ampeg, Alvarez Tom Anderson back in 2002 was 2280 some of these guitars I've never heard of can't remember I like these acrylic mockingbirds. I'd love to get one of these acrylic mockingbirds. You can get these uh, BC Riches, these Korean models on Reverb now for like 800 to 1100 bucks. Those are pretty cool. I like that. You used to have a Mockingbird Supreme that was stolen, unfortunately. That thing was from the early 80s. Funky guitar. Hey, there's a Brian Moore. These are these are awesome. I recently did a a video of my Brian Moore eye guitar. Cool. I don't see my particular model. I've got the low end, bottom of the barrel one. But all these are. I guess these are manufacturer uh, suggested prices. But even these eye guitars were thirteen to sixteen hundred. Brian Moore MC1 model is fabulous. Great guitars. Court. Carvin. I miss Carvin guitars. I never bought one. I always wanted a special order one from the catalog, but I'd like to find me a Carvin. The Dean there. Dan Electro, Daisy Rock, good lord. Look at these Epiphones. They had this weird looking crackle looking strange ultra hot covered humbucker pickups. Yeah, I bet they are. John Lennon Casino. Three grand. Manufacturer suggested price for this Epiphone John Lennon. Woo! John Lee Hooker, 3000 Good night. 
56 gold top, Epiphone for a thousand. I know these are suggested retail prices, but that's still high. These Wildcats I thought were cool. Yeah, I thought they looked neat. Look at Eric Johnson looking all young there. Now he looks like Grandpa riding on the lawnmower. How times have changed. Of course, I sort of look like that myself, but you can get Ernie Ball Axis for 18.55. Wow. Silhouette, Albert Lee. These are that's a funky looking guitar right there. There's a Luke. 1700 for a Luke. John Petrucci models. Seventeen hundred. Hmm. Not bad. ESP. I just have an Eclipse similar to that. It was a nice guitar. Pretty solid. Fender lineup. Got the Ingve Strat over here for eighteen fifty. I've got one of these Tom DeLong strats. I've got one on a video on YouTube. List price was $700 on that. Now they go for a pack $1,500 or more. I don't know if that's still the going price, but they have really gone up. Texas Special Strat, $1,299. I mean, these are pretty good prices, I mean, honestly, in comparison to today's pricing. Of course, it was 20 years ago. There's a, there's a telly with a B-Bender, 1449. I don't think you'd come close to that nowadays. Fernandez, Dragonfly. Check this out, they're advertising the 5152. Had a chance to buy one of these a year and a half ago for 500 bucks. This had, I should have I should have bought it. I backed out on it. I, not a fan of it, but that would have been a good a good buy. I could have made some money on that. These I like these better because they had the separate EQ for the gain and the clean channel. Okay, we're going to get into Gibson here. A lot of people hate Gibson. I personally love Gibson. So if you if you hate Gibson, you can comment below. It's fine. We all have different opinions. I love this EDS 1275. 4229. That's a great price. 2500 for a Les Paul Classic. Yeah, these... Prices have definitely gone up on these on Gibsons. Gibson really used to release a lot of different Les Pauls and different models. They they went crazy for a while there, where you they had like I don't know a dozen or so Les Pauls. Now they've stripped it back, which makes it easier. It was a '58 R8 model, 5,700 bucks. Hmm. Les Paul Acoustic. I don't ever remember seeing anything like that. What on earth? Huh. I've never even seen that on Trogly. He's slacking. Come on, Trogs. GNL. A Leo Fender Company, company clearly. Never played a GNL. I'd like to give it a shot and see what it's like. Probably awesome. I got a buddy that plays GMPs. Swears by them. I think they kind of look funky. The headstock to me is 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 messed up. I mean, it looks like a cork or something. I don't know. The headstock of the guitar isn't right. I just I can't buy into it. Just can't do it. Gretsch and Godin stuff. Gretsch have remained consistent in their 
I mean, they just, their looks, their appearance, they're just timeless. Gretches are pretty. I've got a big Gretch. It's made in Indonesia that I really dig. It's blue with white binding. Forget the model. It's like a G5440 or 5240 or something like that. Hondo. Hondo made an appearance. 400 bucks for a Hondo single cut. Is that, is that the Hondo single cut? Holy crap, man. I'd, I'd rock that. <laughs> Why not? Hondo was my first guitar back in 85. Had a Les Paul copy and then a Strat copy. The Les Paul copy was nice, that Strat copy of the Hondo. That was absolute trash. Josie and the Pussycats. That was a movie, wasn't it? I think I remember seeing that on like a advertisement. Playing Samick. More electrics. Got some Ibanez here. There's the Corn K7. That was $17.99. Remember these DBK gems? $15.99 for a black DBK. The finish on these things were terrible. They were like bumpy and real rough, man. It was, it was a bad decision for Ibanez. Funky, but I wasn't sold on it. Kind of wish I had one now, though. Jackson's. Man, they sure were proud of these. These are 1400 on, on up to 2400 2900 for this. Must be USA made, clearly, those high-priced ones. Which I'm, I know they're great, but man, that's, that's a lot of money for a Jackson. Kramer's. Look at this Kramer Imperial. 229. And that's even got like a it looks like it's got a fake Floyd on it. That's cool. I don't ever remember seeing that Kramer Imperial. That's pretty awesome. I think. That's cool. Hard to bring those to gigs, man. Those things, if you put them in a case, they take up the whole back seat of the car. Terrible. Parker's. Now I'm now I'm getting way back in my memory now. Parker flies. They were cool. Reeves Gabriels from David Bowie's band. He plays with Cure now, I believe. A friend of mine's buddies with Reeves Gabriels and tells me he's been gigging with the Cure now for about a decade. These are cool. I know a lot of people didn't like Parkers, but I'd, I'd like a Parker Fly. Even if it was one of the cheap ones. Look at the headstock on that thing. That should be on, like, Ryan Bruce's Guitar Fails. That headstock... Holy smokes. <laughs> Here's the Brian Moore Eye Guitars. That's like the one that I have, except I don't have a trim. My model is this one, but the double cut. Well, I don't have all the electronics. It's always a bad idea for guitar companies to, to make them MIDI or synthesizers. They're just guitars. Hopefully guitar manufacturers have learned their lesson that we don't need to be doing that. Just make us a solid guitar that rocks. High quality. These PRSs, nice. Santana SE, seven, what is it, 738 McCarty's, 2840 for McCarty. Holy crap, the Santana 2 was eight grand in 02. Whew. Totally different side of the, side of the fence. PVs. Here's the PV Wolfgangs. P PV Wolfgang Special for $9.98. Then a Wolfgang Special Flame Top, $14.99. Then the EVH Wolfgang for $16.50. I had a Pat Pending Wolfgang that uh, I sold for reasons I will not disclose. It's stupid reasons. Nothing bad, just dumb. And uh, I shouldn't have done that, but we all make mistakes. There's Rickenbackers. Surprisingly, they can put prices in here a lot of times. Rickenbacker, they're like, ah, oh, you can't advertise our prices. Reverend. I think Rickenbackers are cool. I'm a Beatles fan. Everybody is, pretty much. But I don't think I play a Rickenbacker, but I think they're cool. This 
Samick doing all their their Gibson copy, their PRS copy, their Gibson copy, another Gibson copy. <laughs> it looks like Twisted Sister there. Eddie Ojeda. Wayne Star. I mean, that is a straight up ripoff of the Kramer. Even the beak neck looking headstock. I mean, I get it. I don't really care if people borrow body designs, but I mean, it's just kind of weird. Look at these dime bag models. 2500 for this dime. A lot of dudes love these dime guitars, but they're another guitar that is impossible to bring to a gig. I think they're ugly. I think, you know, Washburn and Dean's are the ugliest guitars on the planet, but, you know, there's a guitar for everybody. Okay, there she is. No electricity, no problem. Go natural. With this raw and woodsy collection. All right. We're going to go through this acoustic section pretty fast. Applause. I had an applause once and the neck came off of it. It got so hot in Nashville, it was uh, left in my car just for a short amount of time and the neck just detached from the body. The luthier had to call Ovation and figure out how to attach it. And there was some special epoxy they sold at Lowe's that they use on the space shuttle and helicopter wings. And that's the only epoxy that will affix those necks to the guitar. So after several attempts, he called Ovation and they told him what to do and he fixed it. Then about a year later, I wound up trading that guitar for something different. <laughs> it was mid-90s, 96 maybe, 98. Look at the cowboy guitar here with the, the little cowboys on it. That's pretty funny. There's it. There it is. That's like my ovation there. It was like the Melissa Etheridge looking deal. Remember these, these little sound holes and stuff? You could not sit down with those guitars. They were rounded in the back and they were slippery. Well, you could sit down with them. You couldn't stand up, actually. You couldn't stand up with a strap because the guitar would slide out from under you and you'd be staring at the top of it. It was frustrating. They sounded really bright though. They were, they were, the acoustics, uh, electric acoustic systems in them were decent. All right, so here we go. Bass player, bass players, here you go. Okay. Probably skip through this kind of quick too. I thought that was Michael Anthony on a bad day for a minute there, but that's not Michael Anthony. Sorry, Mike. I always like this girl in the coffin case. Uh, that goth girl, she's probably nothing but trouble, but had a goth girlfriend once. It was crazy. She's nice, but <laughs> that's a long story another, for another day. I wouldn't do that again, I don't think. All right, so let's see what we got here. We got the leopard out again. It's a Fender Relic Telecaster and a PV Fury 5 string. See what this other side looks like. Oh, there it is. She's dressed up like the leopard. Whoop. It's a Marshall Marshall AVT. And a Dean Baby ML. Huh, all right. Guitar to match the outfit. More basses, 
Got the Hoffners here. 2500 bucks for a McCartney Hoffner. Schechter, PV, Reverend, Yamaha, Taylor. Even got a dime bag base. Now for the amps. He's back, guys. He's hungry. The hunt is on. Look at this tool. Mike Francis. Behringer V amp. I bet you that thing sounded like honeybees trapped in a box. Lies rocking all these legacy heads. I need me a legacy. I said that the last time I did a guitar review, guitar magazine review. Here's some Fender stuff. The Cyber Twin. Boy, that was a failure. <laughs> I mean, we just want this right here, this 59 Baseman. This is it. I mean, don't give us this cyber junk. Technology, when it, for, when it started getting relevant, or not relevant, but prevalent and, and more advanced, everybody was like, let's start putting technology in everything, guitars, amps, and we're like, no, let's not. It was, like, cool and innovative at the time, but it just... You just can't change perfection. I got one of these duo tones. I bought one of these. You see this in the back of my videos. I love this duo tone. These things were 2600 bucks. This is a great amp. Hughes and Kettner are fantastic. They make some solid, solid stuff. Oh boy, I remember these Johnson amps. I think everybody thought they were going to play like Eric Johnson with this garbage. Talk about honeybees in a box. More of it here. This line six. It'd be fun to stick these up against like a katana nowadays. Katanas sound good, but boy, modelers have in IRs and and plugins have really, really just <laughs> completely changed the game. Wonder what it's gonna be like in ten more years. Wonder if we'll go forward or we're gonna go even farther backwards. I got these nineteen eighty seven plexis. I was trying to find them on this page to see where it was listed. It doesn't say here are the here's the cabinets. Huh. Hard to find this stuff. Here it is, 50 watt plexi head circa 66 to 69, 100% all tube, 312AX7s, 2 EL34s, $13.99. I'll take five of them, please. <laughs> Here's my Discover card. Advanced to today, throw them up on Marketplace or Reverb or whatever. Warhead. There's the 5152. They wanted a solid grand for it. Funny now, the 5150 Iconic is $899. So 20 years later, they're still putting out 5150 heads, and they're cheaper. And it's 20 years. So how about that for deflation? Here's a slow 100. 3400 to 3849. Probably, I bet you the colors and the, the skins, customization might have added more to that. Perhaps. Maybe it may be the case. Who knows? It's one of my amps I need. THD had an amplifier. Huh, I thought they only made hot plates. Okay, here we go. She must have got some kind of mayonnaise or something on her fingers. She's, but anyway, she's got these pedals on her belt. It's ready to go. Declare war on boring guitar tones. Alright, let's do it. We're almost at the end.
everybody, but we're into the effects. There's a loop station, 399. Akai, BBE, Morley stuff. I like Morley. Morley's good. All right. Oh, I, I, I love these Dan Electro pedals. They were garbage, but they were, they had some really fun tones. And they were cool. They were named like Hash Browns, Milkshake, Grilled Cheese, Pepperoni, T-Bone, Surf and Turf, Tuna Melt. I had the Tuna Melt. I had the Surf and Turf. No, I didn't have the Surf and Turf. I had the Tuna Melt. I had a Pastrami. There was some Octaver that I had. I can't remember what it was called. It's I don't see it on here. There it is, the French Toast. I had the French Toast. I still have it somewhere. It's in a box somewhere. These things were plastic and really easy to break, but they were pretty neat. Pretty interesting. Makes me want to look on online for some of this old stuff. I'm feeling some nostalgia. Got the feels, man. The nostalgia feels. 20 years ago. What the hell? 4995 dollars for what? A harmonizer is that it? What is this? Orville harmonizer? Heck no. Five thousand bucks for an even tied harmonizer? Get out of town. No, sir. Hell no. <laughs> it's Pod Pro. <laughs> nine hundred bucks. Okay, so you can buy the Pod Pro for nine hundred bucks, or you could get a fifty one fifty two tube head for a thousand, or you could get a Plexi for thirteen ninety nine. So so the guy that spent nine hundred bucks on this I want to know if you're out there watching this and tell me how you feel that you bought that versus that Plexi for uh, $13.99. You could have spent $500 more dollars and, and had a Plexi head versus this thing. Roger Mayer Stone Fuzz. That's cool looking. I've seen those around. This was terrible. This pedal. These are the ugliest. These snarling dog stuff. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, Tech 21. Gotta go back. I like Tech 21 stuff. I don't know what they're talking about. The Sansamps here. Sansamp Classic. 400 bucks, pretty much. I got a Sansamp Classic. That is a fantastic fantastic pedal. Oh, not this guy again. Perfect pitch guy. Well, he's looking disheveled. He used to be all dressed up with a cane and white suit. Now he's, his hair has kind of got that sort of like that back thing going on. He's grizzled. I don't know. Maybe he's falling on hard times. Sound reinforcement. Just going to drop the mic. Behringer, low end, but I got a Behringer cabinet under my Hughes and Kettner. I love it. It's a stereo cabinet. It sounds great. This stuff kind of bores me. Samson, that's Sam ass junk. Um, Sound Tech, Yorkville. Whew. Okay, tuner straps and picks. Okay, more carbon advertisements. Coffin case. I got a coffin case. They were kind of cheap, actually. They're not the best. They kind of look neat, but I still got my coffin case. I put my Tom DeLong strat in it. Sovtech tubes. $17.80 for a 6L6 tube. How about that? OK. 
Okay, more boring stuff here. Gibson parts. Little gadgets. I like gadgets. The problem with gadgets is you can buy like five things and be up to like 50, 60 bucks and then you just got a bunch of little gadgets. There's your THD hot plate I was talking about, 349. I've heard those things sound great. I've got the Bougera one and it's okay, but I paid 80 bucks for my Bougera, or 60, used. Just couldn't fork out 300 bucks for a hot plate. They're still expensive. All right, ended with a Rickenbacker ad and an ovation. All right, there you go. Guitar Buyer's Guide from Guitar World 2002. If you like this video, please comment below, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.